The nightmare truly never ends. I don't know if we'll ever see daylight again. My co-pilot is a neckbeard number zero. My god, dude. <laughs> we just can't get enough. Hey there, Red Eggs gang. It looks like I finally got a bit of time to write, so let's not delay any longer, and we will get into another story about Chris. Yeah, didn't think you'd be hearing that anytime soon, did ya? Surprise! <laughs> the thing is, I heard coming down the grapevine that there was some commotion running around. Apparently, you guys just can't get enough, and some people just wanted to know what it was like meeting Chris for the very first time, so I figured, you know what? Let's talk about my very first day on the job. Very Tarantino-esque, close the book on the whole thing and then show how it started? My god, just a masterclass in storytelling. <laughs> so who is Chris? Well, Chris is a very fat and sweaty man surrounded by an impenetrable aura of poopy coom stinky stank. He's a defective troglodyte of a human being being content to dwell in his own personal dark triad of crystal, anime, and lot lizards. Chris and I both used to work together for a trucking company, a major one at that, and we drove as a team. We would take turns driving the big rig down the road in shifts. Things were usually okay when Chris was driving, with usually being the operative word in that particular clause, but whenever his shift would end, and I would have the wheel, or doubly so whenever both of our shifts were over and we were free for the night, then Chris would find himself free to go and do... Chris things. What exactly are Chris things? Well, if you've been paying attention, then you definitely know the things already. <laughs> yes, all of the things. Then, despite my best efforts to reel in his atrocious behavior, to get him to embrace modesty and tact and basic human hygiene and try to make Chris act like a normal human being, it really was always in vain. Thankfully, I have been free of Chris for some time now and I haven't really looked back. Well, except to write these stories, of course. And I thank you for reliving all that trauma for our amusement. <laughs> Uh, it's been a wild ride. I'm glad it's not quite over. I think this entry officially unseats Unfortunookie as the longest saga on the channel. So congratulations, Mommy Honkadonkas! It's time for a parade! Anyway, that first day was a day much like any other in life and I rose from my bed before the crack of dawn, prepared to face a bold new day. I was bright-faced and happy to have a new job driving trucks. <laughs> and I woke up that morning and showered and shaved and kissed the wife goodbye while she still slept soundly in our bed, and I climbed into my car and drove to the yard, high on life and belting out radio songs the whole way. Isn't it so nice to get a glimpse of OP before his spirit gets crushed completely? <laughs> I was more than ready to take life by the horns and show my worth. It was time to feed my growing family and feed them well. No more food banks, no more loans, no more remortgaging the house this time. No, we were set and there was promise to be had and I was going to make the most of it. Gotta respect the hell out of you for that. Stepping up, doing what you need to do. A man provides. So putting all that behind him, Honker Dunker says, no, we were set. And there was promise to be had, and I was going to make the most of it. Economic hard times were behind us at long last. Well, I got to the yard, and the sun was just beginning to peek out over the horizon. And I walked into the office and talked to one of the folks there, a lovely young girl sitting at the front desk. I was a new arrival, and I asked if they could go and show me around the yard and possibly point me to the truck that I'd be driving. Well, they looked at the paperwork, and their pleasant morning smile turned into a scowl, and they said, Oh, you poor thing. You gotta drive that truck. I was, <laughs> I was a little put off by that remark, <laughs> but I tried not to let it phase me because... I knew that people can be funny with their interpersonal politics, and 
Whatever was so bad about it probably wasn't actually that bad in the first place. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. How my optimism would be completely dashed in only a few short moments. <laughs> uh, Jesus, dude. With the power of hindsight, <laughs> this story gets like progressively more funny. So they obliged me. They got a copy of the key from the front office and handed it to me and told me to follow them out into the fleet yard. And when we arrived there, we walked among the rows of parked big rigs in the early morning chill, passing rows of pristine machinery, ready to drive the engine of commerce for the well-being of our great nation. They paused a few feet shy of a truck in front of me, and motion seemingly dejected at a worn-looking, unloaded Peterbilt with blue paint, and told me, Here's your ride. Good luck. <laughs> I thanked them, and they mumbled, Sure, whatever. <laughs> uh, and turned and walked away. As if somehow, just being near that truck, I had already become tainted with some foul and unspeakable aura that rankled within. All mysteries shall soon be unveiled. <laughs> but OP just shrugs it off. With a big smile on my face, I walked up to the driver's side door and opened it. And I was not ready for the billowing cloud that greeted me for the very first time in my life. Lots of memories are tied to sense of smell. Luckily, I don't think this particular smell will ever be able to be recreated. <laughs> so, we've all smelled bad smells at some point in our lives, yes, and to a certain degree, we managed to conduct ourselves with dignity and grace when confronted with them. Frankly, I've worked a lot of gross jobs in my time, even having a gig for a while with the city, working in the sewers before they had a bunch of cutbacks and layoffs, and really, I thought I had smelled it all. <laughs> but despite my experience trawling through septic sludge, I was not ready for that this morning. It was still early, you see, and I was still shaking off the last vestiges of sleep that clung to the corners of my psyche, and so I was entirely unprepared for the horrors that lurked within. I did not expect to get greeted with the smell of a decaying coom carcass upon opening that door, <sighs> but greeted me it did, and I wondered for a moment if perhaps my co-pilot-to-be had actually passed away inside of that truck, and I was going to be discovering their juicy, dead body for the very first time. <laughs> if only we got off the hook that easy, right? <laughs> God. Uh, a heap of miscellaneous garbage tumbled out to the ground as the door swung wide, and I gasped in surprise at that startling avalanche, and that, my friends, proved to be the most fatal mistake of all. I took in a big whiff of that curdling smegmal smearage punctuated by the fecal fallout <laughs> uh, that I was sure had deposited itself on the upholstery of the truck by the unwashed, sticky hands of an unaccompanied occupant. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, yes, it powders my spine, but it's beautifully written. I miss this more than I'll ever admit. <laughs> As I reeled from the pungent shock and glared into the abyss wherein I'd been sentenced, I could see those pasty, milky white streaks on the side of the faux leather passenger seat, taunting me. The stains twisted and warped into words by the janky hallucinogenic odor, and suddenly I could make out the words, Welcome to hell, painted on the passenger seat in dried coom. <laughs> it's time to turn and run. I'd rather live in a box than endure this, but I don't know, OP got, got a payout for enduring it, so I guess all's well that ends well. <laughs> I flailed about from that smell. And as I did, I accidentally kicked at the garbage that had fallen out upon the rapid opening of the door, takeout boxes everywhere, and one of them, curiously heavy, had landed with a wet, crunching plop 
<coughs> soda bottles, and yes, even used toilet paper of many varieties came out and trailed off in the early morning breeze, like brown and white streamers in the air on a celebratory eve of excrement. <laughs> Uh, I wasn't even clocked in yet, and I had already started coming down with PTSD. There was no warm-up period, there is no slipping off of the mask. Chris is who he is, as horrible as that may be, and all OP can really do here is cope for the sake of his family. God, it cuts me deep, man. I struggled not to spew everywhere as I staggered back to the office. Tears in my eyes from both the stench and the tragedy of it all. <laughs> Still reeling from that olfactory assault that had precipitated against me without warning. And I came in through the office door, the door chime sounding overhead, and the clerk looked up from her computer at me with great concern. She asked me if I needed something mustering up as much empathy as she could afford to a man who had just stared into a horrific abyss such as that particular truck. Trash bags, gloves, bleach, help me please. <laughs> I stammered through gritted teeth as I stared over at a trash can, fighting the urge to rid myself of my breakfast. I could still taste that smell in the back of my throat. She got up and went to a supply closet, and she did manage to round up a couple of plastic gloves and a trash bag or two and brought them back to me. And as she returned, I said, what the hell is wrong with that truck? You could have at least warned me what was in there. This has got to be some kind of bad joke, right? Surely just a little hazing ritual you play on the new guy for a few cheap laughs? Come on now, I can't seriously have to drive that thing she replied no nope, sorry it's no joke that's your ride i stay as far away from that truck as possible for good reason and now you know i probably should have warned you but the guy who normally drives that truck well let's just say i don't like interacting with him at all so i just wanted to get as far away as possible as fast as i could i'm sorry you've got a ride with him <laughs> Your sorry does nothing. Save your sympathy! <laughs> uh, oh. I was in disbelief at this point. I had traded my soul and my dignity for my own financial gain. And I wasn't quite certain if I was prepared to make that trade now that I knew what the stakes actually were. <sighs> Either way, I couldn't just return home. The bills had gone on unpaid quite long enough, and my wife was counting on me to bring home the bacon. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's seeing the people I love do without, and I was not about to let that happen. Who do you respect more than a family man? God damn, honka -donkers. Come on out to the Philippines, I'll buy you a beer, I'll buy you ten beers. <laughs> I call back those days working in the city sewers, and I knew that if I could do that, I could do this. If I just focused, then I'd be fine. So I bit the bullet, steeled my nerves, tied my shirt over my face, and went back to that cursed truck, and set to work piling out the garbage into the trash bags, starting first with the used toilet paper that was now blowing all over the lot, clinging to the tires and mirrors of other trucks, and lodging itself into the chain link yard fence. <laughs> Uh, oh, it is but a glimpse of the things to come. I gingerly picked it up so as to avoid touching the poopy and coomy smears that decorated that putrescent paper mache. <laughs> when I finally rounded up everything that had blown away, I started on the soda bottles that spilled out next, and then moved on to the takeout boxes that were sliding all over the pavement. Most were empty, or extremely light, smelling of rancid food, and some insects scattered as I picked them up, and I simply deposited them into the trash bag. But the one that I was particularly leery of was the heavy one that landed with a plop on the concrete. Bro, did you duke in a takeout container? <laughs> uh, what is this? 
gingerly, I kick that container just to see what I was getting myself into, and I saw brown, muddy streaks that had deposited themselves onto the ground underneath the breaking styrofoam as the container moved to the side from the force of that blow. That one ginger kick was enough to release the smell that had fermented inside. <laughs> oh, no! Uh, much akin to Jankum, made from a man with irritable bowel syndrome. Not that I would know anything about that, but I do imagine it would be on par with this. Why is this in here? Is he saving his poop for later? I cried out to nobody in particular, expecting no answer in return. Especially not from God. <laughs> Uh, he has abandoned us. A couple of truck drivers were going to their rig and they looked over at me with sad, knowing eyes, silently conveying to me the hidden message. Yeah, he crapped in that box and he was saving it just for you, all right. Needless to say, I let the takeout crap box lie on the pavement, being a step too far for even an experienced sanitation technician to handle. Dude, when is enough enough? Look at the lengths that one man has been driven to in order to provide for his family. I guess so much respect. And again, I am sorry as ever that this whole thing had to happen. Between the smell and the coom stains and the toilet paper and the poo-filled takeout box and the lack of concern for my psychological and physical well-being when exposed to a fermenting poop nest, yeah, I was on the verge of tears, and I still hadn't even managed to clock in yet. Oh god, dude, new job is kind of like new relationship, okay? The first day, that is the best that you're ever going to be treated. So if that is unacceptable, you need to leave, like, as soon as possible. And still, OP perseveres. I wailed as I piled out some more garbage into the bag from inside that cab, and then... Finally, shirt still tied around my face, I managed to climb into the cab itself. <coughs> I jammed the key in the ignition, rolled down both windows completely, opened the other door, put on the fan, and then staggered outside again to let it all air out while I stood back at a safe distance. I wanted to turn and run and cry while doing so. I really did, guys. Everything in my mind and body and soul screamed at me that now was the time to turn away and never look back and find some job anywhere doing anything but this. <sighs> but that rapidly dwindling bank account haunted my waking mind and I had to resolve myself then and there that I would stand strong in the face of this overwhelming adversity. I simply had to see myself through this so that my family and I wouldn't end up going hungry or homeless. <sighs> what a crap show. Damn, there is some, some feels in this episode. I see some pain behind those eyes, OP. So, as I sat there in the lot, visibly flustered, clearly upset, borderline tears, muttering to myself and Cursing the unknown progenitor of this mountain of mess, I heard a voice from behind me. Hey, what's wrong with you? I was still reeling as I stared hopelessly into the mess before me, and I began to rant to the unknown companion behind me, saying, Can you believe this, man? It's my first day on the job, and they give me the keys to this truck, right? Well, I go to open it up, and what awaits me but this freaking train wreck. And they expect me to drive in it and... Man, I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do. I need this job bad. Me and my family are hurting, but... I don't know if I can do it, man. It's so freaking gross in there. Can you even believe this? Just look at it. Somebody shuffled up behind me and I heard him murmur, I don't see anything wrong with it. And then I turned to face this new arrival. Practically shouting, NOTHING WRONG WITH IT! And then he repeated himself casually, Yeah, I don't see nothing wrong with it. <laughs> of course you don't. 
Uh, the self-reflection is just not there. Also, hey, I gotta say, if you made it this far in the episode, you must not see anything wrong with it, so I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to Red X. Freshest daily cringe content, totally science, just the fact, promise Swayze's, like, so much. So before me stood a flabby man pushing upward of 300 some odd pounds, dressed in a cheap t-shirt, covered in crumbs, now cemented with coom, and a cartoon girl on it, and those characteristic grimy sweatpants stained with sweat and seed, his pockmarked face shone with the illustrious coating of fast food grease, and double chins quivered with each word that he spoke. He smiled his yellowing teeth at me, and extended a bare paw of a hand out to grab mine, and as my eyes traced from the curious wet splotch on his pants fabric, to his mitt, I knew that I did not want to grab that hand. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one bullet dodged. Let's see you do that with the next trillion. He said at this point, That's my truck, man. I'm Chris. It's nice to meet you. What were you even doing at my truck? I heard they were going to get me a new co-pilot. Are you him? <laughs> My heart sank. I had found the denizen of the den, all right, and he saw nothing wrong with the atrocity in which he dwelt. I did not shake his hand and mumbled, I'm OP, before turning back to the mess, and then I exclaimed, Dude, why can't you clean up after yourself? For Christ's sake, do you even know what I pulled out of there? Coyly, Chris responded, no? What did you pull out of there? <laughs> I began to rattle off a long inventory list of detritus that had come out of the cab before gesticulating wildly to the takeout box filled with his excrement on the ground, and Chris remarked, Oh, I was wondering why it was beginning to smell funny in there. I guess I forgot I took a poop in it. <laughs> Uh, there's nothing funny about this smell. It smells like death! I practically shouted, Beginning to smell funny? And Chris said, Yeah, uh, something was up for sure, but I didn't know what. I guess I forgot to take that out. Shame, too. <laughs> I was gonna give it to a hungry homeless dude as a prank. Oh my god. Uh, I, uh, every twist and turn, he never fails to shock me. After so long, how could you be such a piece of human garbage? OP says I was shocked. Shocked, I say. I didn't even quite process that last remark before he hit me with, So you ready to get on the road or what? <laughs> I hate being in this lot, man. Everyone here is so lame and rude. I don't want to be here any longer than I have to. And I replied, hell no, I'm not ready to hit the road. I'm marching my butt back to the office to get all this sorted out right now. There's no way in hell I'm riding with you, dude. I walked away, and I could hear him jeering at me, saying, uh, What's the matter? Sad little beta male can't take a little man musk. Whatever, bro. I didn't want to ride with you anyway. You're probably gay, and I don't like the gays! <laughs> oh god, dude. Uh, I took all of that in stride as I stormed back to the office and up to the desk. The clerk looked at me again with that same bored look in her eyes, and she said, What can I do for you now, Mr. Honker Donkers? I wanted to be civil with her. I really did. But I was already beyond the breaking point that particular morning, and I'm sure she could tell. Frankly, I'm glad she didn't take it personally. I launched into a tirade, certainly unduly, at that poor girl working at the front desk. But she didn't even blink because somewhere on a basic level, she understood all of my frustrations and had probably heard it about a billion times before, Whenever Chris had gotten himself a new co-pilot. 
I imagine that she even had a script prepared that she had pulled up on her computer screen the moment I returned to the office because when at last I finished my rant, she spoke without missing a beat. She said, look, this is your assigned co-pilot. We have no other team driver positions open at this time and we can't really do solo trucks either. If the company invests in additional trucks and begins hiring new people, you can apply to HR and request a transfer from your current team and they'll review your transfer request, but be aware that moving from his position may impact your salary. Otherwise, you're free to leave the company or you can continue driving with us. What a nice way to say I'm screwed. <laughs> OP says, my heart skipped a beat. When I heard that promise of possibly getting another co-pilot, I just had to ask how my salary would be impacted if I requested that tantalizing offer of transfer, and when she named the new number, my jaw dropped onto the floor. The cut in pay was significant, quite significant to the point where it would hurt, and perhaps subconsciously, I pieced together that I was being paid to be a glorified babysitter. It's not worth it, dude. No amount of money in the world. Actually, I take that back. You bump us up into seven, eight figures, maybe for a little while. <laughs> yeah, we needed the money real bad about this time, and I didn't really have any recourse within the company at the moment. So you guys know full well what happened next. I bit down hard on that bullet. I know, I know, I realistically shouldn't have, because I didn't think that I would be stuck in that hell ride for so long, but I needed the gig real bad just to stay on top of everything. The economy was booming at the time, and I certainly didn't know that the COVID crash was around the corner, and all bets for a chance at riding with someone else would then be off the table, so I assumed I wouldn't have to put up with this horrific nightmare for very long. That, of course, was a mistake too, because not long after, we experienced a bit of an industry collapse, and rather than actually seeing the company expand, there were layoffs and vehicles being sold. I said, fine, and shuffled back to the truck. Yep, that's some heavy-duty copium. <laughs> so, at this point, Chris had climbed on into the truck and was shuffling around the cab, perhaps poking through his trash heap for some unknown artifact with which to arouse himself while he waited for word of whether I was going to keep riding with him or not. I came up after him, pushing some of the mounded detritus off into the corner as I did so, and I stared daggers at the disgusting beast with whom I would be spending my time. He looked at me and asked if I was finally ready to ride or what. And I said, yeah, let's go already. And I went to go sit down in the driver's seat, imagining that to be the safest place in the cab. Can't really jerk it while you're driving, you know? You cannot imagine how difficult it is to hold a half gallon of mood juice and polish the one I go for. Chris, of course, instantly shrieked at me, yelling, eh, What do you think of doing in that seat? And I said, I'm taking us out of the yard. And he said, oh, hell no, you aren't. I don't even know if you know how to back the truck up and out of here. Move aside, newbie. <laughs> I looked at him incredulously and said, dude, my credentials are immaculate. I had to operate heavy machinery in some of my previous jobs, and I also drove the trucks to transport them. He said, yeah, it doesn't matter, dude. This truck is my house, okay? I'm just, just gonna let some random a-hole back my house out of the lot if I don't even know he can drive. So what if you worked for the city? Never heard the saying, good enough for government work? <laughs> you civic idiots don't know how to get anything right. Get out of that seat. This is the first conflict, and you never should have let him win it. I think it could have gone a different way. Maybe. <laughs> OP casts a forlorn glance to the passenger seat and the white stains that had been wiped onto it, and I said, I'll get up when you clean that seat. Otherwise, I'm doing this. He didn't budge to go clean up that chair, so I jammed the key in the ignition and started to warm up the glow plugs. Yes, dude, I love this. Line in the sand. <laughs> 
I'll allow you to win this, but only if you subjugate yourself first. It's a really big brain play. <laughs> he started squealing like a stuck pig instead, declaring, I didn't know what I was doing! And he said, he couldn't trust me and I needed to get up right now! I repeated my first ultimatum. Clean. The. Seat. He said, fine, fine, uh, uh, go get some rags or something and wipe it down, okay? Just don't take my truck out of here, dude. He lumbered out of the cab, leaving me alone in that trash heap with the windows down and the fan on. About now is the point where you should just start the truck and leave without him. <laughs> with the purging of all the kumi toilet paper and the poop-filled takeout box, it was beginning to smell a bit better in there, especially with the fresh air now coming in through the windows, but uh, it was still quite musty for reasons that you are all far too familiar with. See a laundry hamper filled with his poopy clothes, more garbage, and the piece de resistance, a rotting coom golem piled beneath his pillow that I had to find one hot summer day. But I, at this time, could not pinpoint the source of this still flowing miasma because it's coming from all around you, dude. <laughs> I shrugged, imagining that the floor was so thoroughly basted at this point that it was just the residual odor of the cab and that that smell was not going to be coming out anytime soon until I could afford to rent a pressure washer and hook it up to a tank of bleach. <laughs> Chris came lumbering back in short order with some wet wipes as promised and he set to work on the seat beside me, barely even touching the thing. If we're being totally honest, he was faking it the whole time and really just managed to re-moisten that dried coom and perhaps smear it around a bit. <laughs> oh god! Uh, it was like he was playing with it. Ooh seeing what new nightmarish patterns he could create with his own jism. <laughs> I'm dead. Just had to make sure the, the spy was good and powdered before we ended the story, didn't we? Oh, OP says, I was getting irritated as I watched him work and I said, screw it. I turned over the ignition. Chris screamed as I started to back up the truck and between him yelling at me and me trying to move the truck out, I nearly sideswiped a parked tractor trailer beside us. When I stepped on the brakes and went to shift gears, Chris shoved me hard from where I sat into the door and started to grasp for the keys in the ignition. And I realized that he was getting ready to kill us all before we had even left the yard. He has so many deep-seated issues to unpack, man. Like, at this point, you, you still assume you're dealing with a, a somewhat rational human being. But after 30-some-odd stories and about the same amount of emails, I, I've come to the conclusion that that's not the case at all. OP continues, With my foot barely still applied on the brakes, I yelled, All right, fine! Give me the wet wipes! I'll clean up the seat and you can drive if you're gonna act like this. Good God. I took the parcel from him and set to work on the passenger's chair as he settled into the driver's seat. Ugh, you let him win! But yeah, I guess what's the alternative? Crash into everything around you? <laughs> <laughs> he fixed his phone to the dongle, shifted into gear, and started us off on our journey as I worked to clean off the passenger seat. With nowhere to actually deposit the garbage from this chair cleanup, I just tossed it into the mounding heap in the back and said, it's good enough for now. When I was at last confident that the chair had been thoroughly sterilized, I sat down and took my place. I went to grab my seatbelt and put it on me, but carefully thought twice about it when I recalled the haunting vision of the coom throne in which I now sat. We didn't converse very much on that initial drive. There was very little to be said and very little that I actually wanted to say to him. And truth be told, Chris was absolutely enthralled in a podcast about waifus and screaming, Daddy, back ah! as we drove down the road. <laughs> I thanked my stars 
that this odious mutant had no real desire to interact with me. But, as we all know, around these parts, good things are simply not made to last. What part of this is a good thing? The not talking, I guess, is a, a small token. But you still have to exist in the same area. Oh, it's just the worst. So uh, here, I'm going to cut this story regarding my first joyride with Chris. Of course, it's not over. Far from it. We've only just left the lot, you see. And that first day was a hell of a doozy. I, however, have to cut it short because I can hear the real world calling my name and I gotta attend to the pressing demands of real life. Don't worry though, friends, because I will be back with another story about Chris soon enough. It continues, it continues! <laughs> the people demanded it, and so it was delivered unto them. Praise be! What a blessed day! <laughs> I hated everything about this, but I think that's the whole point, so... I know you guys enjoyed it on some level as well. Like, comment, subscribe, share the video around, let people know that Chris is back. Back again. Seriously, tell a friend. Uh, follow me on social medias, you know, Discord, TikTok, etc, etc. I'd also like to thank my Patreon patrons, my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous YouTube channel members. You guys just doing the most out here all the time, always. And you will get your due soon enough. Support if you can. Join us again tomorrow, I hope. Uh, keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands. Always remember, friends, that you are loved. You are worthy. You definitely, definitely deserve it. And I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. Uh,